Welcome, everyone. This is the PACAC.org Virtual College Fair, an exploration for all students sponsored by the Pennsylvania Association for College Admissions Counseling and StriveScan. PACAC is a nonprofit association comprised of more than 1,200 school counselors, college admissions counselors, independent educational consultants, and other professionals who are responsible for guiding students through the important transition from high school to post-secondary options. Thank you all for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. How do you ask questions? Please use the Q&A button on your screen to type out your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening. So be sure to check out the full schedule if you choose at pacac.org slash virtual. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same <clears throat> website, pacac.org. Uh, I'd like to now turn it over to our presenters, uh, Bill from admissions and Mario, a student at Youngstown State University. Hey, take it away. All right, thank you very much. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. <clears throat> All right, let me grab my sheet here. All right, so I wanna thank you all very much for joining us for the Youngstown State University virtual session. My name is Bill D'Amico. I'm an associate director in our Office of Admissions here at Youngstown State, and we have a lot to pack into this 45-minute session. Some of the topics that we're going to go over include the things you see in front of us. Um, what I would encourage you all to do after the presentation is to visit our visit.ysu.edu page, where if you're interested in doing more virtual tours, we have virtual residence hall tours, we have a virtual tour of campus. Uh, if you're so inclined to visit campus, we also have a bunch of different visit dates here on campus where you can actually come and check us out. At the end of the presentation, we will have a student, Mario, come on and he's going to talk a little about his experience. And if you have any questions throughout this presentation, please put them in the Q&A area and I'll be sure to answer those during the question portion. I'll have to interrupt you for just a minute. Your screen share has only, it only shows a really thin line, just the right side of what you're supposed to be showing. It really? doesn't show the full screen. All right, let's try this again. Uh, yeah, that usually works. Can you see? There you go. Uh, Welcome to Youngstown State. All right, so everything I said basically is the same, but here are the topics that we're going to cover. And as I said, the visit.ysu.edu page is a great resource for um, virtual tours of all of our different residence halls. Um, a virtual tour of campus. And again, if you'd like to physically come visit, we'd be happy to do that. Before we jump in, I do want to show a brief video kind of giving an overview of our last academic year and why our students are why I'm proud. In Youngstown State University's 112 year history, there's never been quite anything like the 2019 2020 academic year. It started out as a relatively ordinary fall semester as we welcomed the class of 2023 to campus. We celebrated the golden anniversary of WYSU. We partnered with IBM to launch an IT workforce accelerator program that promises to put YSU a step ahead in the high-tech job market. Our world-renowned English festival received the prestigious National Intellectual Freedom Award. The Beagley College of Education earned a national A grade for early reading instruction. And for the 10th year straight, our beautiful 145 acre campus adorned with nearly 2000 trees was designated as a Tree Campus USA. Our students also continue to excel, including the 2020 National Student Intern of the Year, our national ranked moot court team, and of course, our national champion ethics bull squad. By late January, we were announcing that the historic We See Tomorrow fundraising campaign had hit its $100 million goal, the most ever in YSU history. The campaign has received 27,000 gifts in all, including 32 donations of $1 million or more, and has set a new goal of $125 million. But then, everything changed. As the deadly coronavirus pandemic swept across the world, every sector of the nation, including higher education, 
came face to face with challenges most of us could never imagine. But the YSU community did what it always does. We came together in an unprecedented fashion. In less than 10 days, we moved all of our classes to remote delivery and developed an array of virtual student support services. We had virtual music performances, online training sessions, web-based rec offerings, and thousands of WebEx and Zoom meetings. And most importantly, our students stepped up, showing tremendous resilience and resolve to turn difficult circumstances into great success. That success included a new student Fulbright recipient, a Barry Goldwater Scholar, and dozens of students across many disciplines, from business to gerontology, journalism to graphic design, winning state and national contests and awards. In the words of student Taylor Valero, who won the Golden Addy Award in advertising, the sky is the limit. Despite the continued challenges, the sky certainly does remain our only limit. We showed our toughness in the toughest of times. Maybe our greatest accomplishment was helping more than 1,400 students graduate in our first ever virtual spring commencement. Now, we enter a new academic year. Many unknowns and many challenges remain. What we do know, however, is that our students will continue to accomplish great things. We know our faculty and staff will be there to support them, and we know that YSU will remain steadfast in delivering high-quality, faculty-engaged education in a safe and nurturing environment, no matter the hurdles we face. We are all in this together, and together we will succeed for all. Okay, so um, a couple points about the video. The first thing I want to say is despite all the challenges that we've faced over the past academic year with this pandemic, I have to be honest with you, there has never been a better time to be a YSU Penguin than right now. There's just a lot of really great things going on on our campus. So first and foremost, President Jim Tressel is a tremendous leader. He's extremely student centered. He definitely puts the students first. And I think you'll feel that vibe when you come to visit campus. Aside from that, there's been a lot of infrastructure projects that we've done on and around campus. Fifth Avenue, which is one of our corridors on the west side of campus, is actually being completely renovated right now. They're putting in an autonomous tram, which means there's going to be a driverless tram that's going to connect downtown to campus and campus up to our health corridor. So that's really cool. We also have a lot of improvements to our academic facilities. Uh, new lab resources being built, a lot of new uh, recreation facilities, athletic facilities, and even the city of Youngstown itself has come a long way. Downtown has a lot of new life and new, a lot of new nightlife, concert venues, restaurants. There's just a, a lot going on and around campus. So again, we're really excited that you're taking a look. Just to give you a brief overview of Youngstown State University, YSU is classified as a mid-sized Division I urban research institution. As you can see in front of you, we have over $39 million in research and service grants available for undergraduate students. Now, I want to make sure that you understand that the, the money that we have for research is not reserved for master's and PhD level students, but you will be able to do research as early as your freshman and sophomore year here at YSU. Aside from that, we have Division I athletics. We have 115 different academic programs, tons of different student organizations, study abroad opportunities, everything that you'd expect to find at a larger school. But as you can see in front of you, um, our average class size at YSU is 26 students. So you're going to get the resource of a larger school, but the intimate class size that you're used to at the high school level, which means similar to high school, your professors here at the college level are going to get to know you. They're going to call you out by name. Uh, I remember being a high school student thinking like, what's college going to be like? Movies, they always show these massive stadium seated halls where there's like a little professor down here and just a sea of people. And I got to be honest with you, that made me a little bit nervous. And I was really happy when I got to YSU to know that that's not what you're going to get. You're going to get the intimacy of a small class. And similar to high school, you're going to meet some really great people. You're going to complain about the homework together. You're going to be doing group projects together. Um, there's just a real camaraderie between uh, the students in your classes and the, the faculty that are teaching them. Here at Youngstown State University, there are three things that are going to make up your Y experience. First and foremost is academics. So um, as I said before, we have 115 different academic programs. They fall within five different colleges here at the university. Just to go over some highlights, uh, engineering is usually one of our biggest programs here at YSU. It's an ABET accredited program, tremendous opportunities. Our Williamson College of Business Administration is AACSB accredited. That puts us in the top 5% of business programs in the world. Uh, the Dana School of Music here at YSU is one of the oldest music programs in the country. They have pretty much everything music related, performance, education, composition, anything that you want to do in music, we have it. 
Um, our health and human services colleges, we have a full bachelor's of science in nursing program, dental hygiene program, a doctorate in physical therapy. So you can start and finish your entire program here at YSU, a great pre-med program. We have partnerships with Neomed in Rootstown and Lecom up in Erie. So two different medical school partnerships. We have a great forensic science program, great criminal justice program. Uh, we have everything education from pre-K to 12, any area you want to study in education we have. Um, there's sports broadcasting, there's psychology. There really is something for everybody. And I, I want to put this out there that, I, you know, as an institution, we realize how difficult it may be to decide what you want to do at that time. So it's totally normal also to come in undetermined. We have a special advisement office I'll talk about in the next slide that will work specifically with undetermined students. And nationally, about half the students out there switch their major at least once. So if you're watching this presentation, and you're thinking, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure exactly what I want to do. Um, you're not alone. So whether you've known your entire life what you want to go into or you're going to come to college and explore the different majors, we certainly have you covered. Aside from that, we have a lot of research and experiential learning opportunities here at YSU. We really want to make sure that you're getting the theory in the classroom, but you're having the opportunity to practice it in the real world, whether it's doing research alongside faculty. We have students that are patented and published with faculty members right now. Um, whether you're doing internship or multiple semester co-ops, whether you're studying abroad, we really want to make sure that you, um, again, get the opportunity to take what you're learning in the classroom and see if it's going to be something that you actually want to do as a career. So we highly encourage that. We also have a great honors college for students that have a 3.5 GPA and either a 26 ACT or a 1240 SAT. You can apply for the honors college. The Honors College has a living learning community cohort, so you'll be living with other Honors College students. You get special faculty interaction, special honors lectures. You get, um, obviously, a bunch of different scholarships tied in with honors. So it really is a great program as well. So <clears throat> my point is, as far as academics goes, you know, that's why you're looking at colleges. Make sure you explore our different programs and take a look to see what we have. Aside from academics, there's a lot of support for you as a student here. We don't just get you enrolled here and say, hey, you know, good luck. Hopefully we see you at the end of four years with that degree. We're with you every step of the way to make sure you're successful. And that really does start off with what are called our academic advisors. And these are very similar to the school counselors that you have at the high school level. Their goal is to make sure that you graduate in four years. So when you meet with them for your first time in orientation, they're going to put a four-year curriculum sheet in front of you, and they're going to keep you on that track to make sure you get out in four years. We also have what's called career and academic advising. So they do a lot in that office. They actually will work with undetermined students. So if you come in and you're not sure what you want to do, they'll work with you. They can run assessments based off your personality and interest to show you careers that are a great fit. And that will kind of help you start exploring different majors. They also do mock interviews. They do resume workshops. They do internship and job fairs. So they're really big at um, not only working with you as advisors, but really helping you to transition out into the workforce. So highly recommend utilizing them. We also have what's called the Center for Student Progress. And in my opinion, that's like the main hub for our support services. So first and foremost, they offer free tutoring in every subject area that we offer. College is, can be more difficult than high school in a lot of different ways. I'll be totally honest with you. I struggled in math at the, at the college level, so I had to utilize tutoring. You'll notice we have a reading and study, study skills department, a writing center, a math assistance center. So we have a bunch of different centers devoted to specific subject area. But if there's ever a class that you're struggling in, know that we have you covered. We also have student counseling services. You know, college has its challenges. There may be a time where you need to talk with a licensed counselor. Maybe you're dealing with homesickness or any kind of other issues that college students face. We have you covered. And we also have disability services for students that are on IEPs in high school. If maybe you're used to getting accommodations like additional test taking time or help with notes or things like that. We have all those services and more here at the uh, college level. And I basically want to let you know that we have all these available to you. We treat you like adults when you're here at the college level. So if you need support, you do need to be proactive and, and reach out and get the support that you need. But just be aware that we want to make sure that you are a successful student and we have a lot of different professionals on this campus to work with you. Last but not least, I mean, student life. College is the absolute best. If you're watching this and you're not enjoying your high school experience, 
I have good news for you. College is way better. I actually liked high school. I was sad when high school ended until I got to college and I totally forgot about high school. It is that much better. I mean, the amount of freedom that you're about to get is it's going to be the best time of your life. So we want you to enjoy it. So outside of obviously academics, there are a lot of really great things that you can do to enjoy your time here at YSU. As I mentioned in the introduction, we are a division one school. So if you are a division one athlete and you're interested in learning more about our sports, ysusports.com has coaching information, our rosters, everything like that. I like sports. I was not at the D1 level. I played pretty much every intramural and co-ed rec league type sport they had here at Youngstown State University. You could certainly do that. We have a great rec center here at YSU. There's a 53 foot climbing wall. There's spinning and yoga and Zumba classes, tons of weightlifting and cardio equipment. There's an eight mile track over there. There's basketball courts, there's racquetball courts. We have what's called adventure rec. We do, uh, we have a skiing and snowboarding club. They go rafting, they go spelunking. Uh, I mean, if you want to be active, we have tons of really great opportunities for you. We have an Olympic swimming pool on campus, sand volleyball. We have a massive indoor facility called the Watts. It's a huge indoor uh, field house. We just built a brand new indoor tennis facility. We have a massive rec. Um, re it's called Rec 5, I believe, up near our residence halls where it's a field where you can play soccer and football. I mean, there's so many different outlets, honestly. We're uh, there's a rumor that the tennis facility is going to have bowling alleys added to it. So really there's a lot going on. Maybe you're more of a spectator. Well, all of our students get free season tickets to all our athletic events. Again, football season, ton of fun, men and women's basketball is a lot of fun to watch. We're in the horizon league for track and field. We like dominate that. So those are really fun to go to. So my point is as far as athletics, whether you're uh, an athlete or not, there's really a lot of great opportunities. And I mean, aside from that, there's over 200 and some student organizations on campus from Greek life. So if you're considering a fraternity or sorority, student government, honor societies, uh, we have a Harry Potter alliance, we have a squirrel watching club, we have video game clubs, robotics clubs, relig religious organizations. Even working on campus as a student is fun. I mean, if you're, if you're looking to work while you're in school, you might as well work on campus. I worked for parking. They paid me to, to sit in a booth, pop a gate, and do my homework. Great job. <laughs> um, you'll meet a lot of really cool people, you know, working on campus. And that kind of brings me to a point I want to put across without getting on a soapbox. I just want to say that college in general is going to be 100% what you make of it. It really is. No matter where you go, take advantage of the opportunities. There are students at YSU, they go to class, they go back to the residence halls, they play video games. You know, I mean, if you're going to do that, why not just join the video game club? I mean, those students will ultimately get their degrees, but I think they're missing out on the whole other side of college, which is trying new things, meeting new people, taking on leadership roles in organizations, just really kind of stepping outside your comfort zone a bit. You know, college is going to be your chance to totally reinvent yourself. So if you're watching this and you're thinking about your high school career and you're like, yeah, you know, I really wish I would have did X, Y, and Z. Do it at college, you know, take advantage. When you're old like me and you look back to college, you're not going to be like, oh man, I just loved all that homework. It's really not going to be. I, I did like my academic courses. Don't get me wrong. But my favorite experiences are the different uh, traveling events I went with my fraternity, the religious clubs I were in, the internships I did, the people I met, the connections I made. It's all of those things that kind of tie together your Y experience. So that was a soapbox. I apologize. But you can see I'm very passionate about students getting involved and enjoying their experience. Okay, so next thing I want to talk about is housing and residence life. So Youngstown State University is unique in the fact that we actually don't require students to live on campus at all. Not your first year, not all your years, nothing like that. Um, I strongly recommend it. There's a lot of studies out there that show that students that live on campus, you know, enjoy their experience and do much better in their courses. Um, if you're interested in living on campus, we have a couple of different residence hall options. We have the YSU halls. Those are the halls that are owned by the university. And those are the halls that are tied into our room and board costs, which I'll cover here in a second. But we have a bunch of really great other options that are on and around campus. They're not owned by the university, but they only cater to YSU students. So for example, Beekner Hall, it's an all girls residence hall. It's right on campus. 
They have their own fee structure. The Flats at Wick, Erie Terminal, University Edge, the Enclave, the Lofts, all really great apartment complexes, one, two, three, four bedroom apartments. They have their own kitchens and bathrooms. So it just, whatever experience you want, you have the opportunity. We even have students that live off campus. Like Mario is going to talk later. He lives in a fraternity house. As a student here, I lived in a fraternity house. We have students that get houses off campus. Totally up to you, whatever you want to do. I do want to show you a quick video right now that showcases one of our residence halls. It's called the Kilcally House. Welcome to Kilcally House, one of the five on-campus residence halls here at Youngstown State University. Kilcally is located right in the center of campus, a short walk from any of your class buildings. Kilcally House is adjacent to the Student Center, where you'll have easy access to a number of restaurants and places to hang out and relax with friends. Kilcally House is a traditional style residence hall with mostly double rooms. It has seven floors and houses about 225 students. The building is co-ed, while each floor is women only or men only. Each floor has a spacious community bathroom and a lounge space for students to relax. Your room comes with one lofted bed, one standard height bed, as well as a wardrobe and a desk for each person. Every room comes equipped with a small refrigerator and a microwave for your convenience. The micro fridge unit is shared by the residents of the room. Wi-Fi is included in all rooms, as well as wired internet ports for your devices. The rooms have all the basic necessities and are highly customizable. Residents are encouraged to be creative with the space, so bring your own stuff and make the room your own. The basement of Kilcally House is the family room of the building. This area includes a large kitchen, a dining area, a rec area, a computer lab, and even soundproof music rooms. The front desk has pots and pans and all the basic tools you need when you're in the mood to whip something up. This area also includes the free laundry room so you can put your clothes in while you do other things. All residents of Kilcally House also enroll in a residential meal plan. You'll have most of your meals at the Crispin Dining Hall, which offers a variety of food and beverage and works on an all-you-care-to-eat system. The dining hall provides many student favorites, including many healthy options. Your meal plan allows you the flexibility to go to the YSU Dunkin' Donuts, Chick-fil-A, as well as other options on and around campus on occasion. Every summer, our housing staff makes improvements to our halls, and we take pride in the fact that our buildings are kept looking good. We also work hard to keep the buildings clean and well-maintained each and every day. Our cleaning crew is on hand around the clock, cleaning restrooms and common areas. Bathrooms are cleaned and disinfected at least twice a day. One of the most important distinctions about living on campus is the fact that trained professional staff members live in the building. Our full-time housing coordinators manage the building and supervise the RA staff. RAs live on your floor and will be a resource for you as you get acquainted with campus. The work of the coordinators and RAs centers around three primary areas, concern for resident safety, providing a clean, well-maintained quality facility, and encouraging a friendly social atmosphere. The staff also plans floor and house activities to help you get to know your neighbors and to make living on campus an enjoyable experience. Lastly, let's talk about safety. We take your safety very seriously, and we work closely with the YSU police to make sure all safety protocols are followed. We have trained staff on site 24 hours a day and video surveillance in the common areas of the building. Your Y card is your key to the building and only residents and approved guests will be admitted into the halls. Each room door has a lock and deadbolt. You can feel comfortable and safe at YSU Housing. You can apply for YSU Housing by navigating directly to our website at housing.ysu.edu. Okay, so um, another thing that I kind of want to talk about that ties into residence life a little bit is the fact that we do allow all students to have cars on campus. So whether you're a first year or an upperclassman, you are allowed to have cars. If you live in a YSU hall, you actually have a special residence parking lot pass where you can park right next to your res hall. Otherwise, if you live in the other options, you get an M pass, it's a mixed lot pass where you can park in any of the M lots around campus. All right, so I want to talk about the cost of attendance and then financial aid and scholarships. So Youngstown State University prides itself on being one of the most affordable schools, not only in the state of Ohio, but actually nationally. So we're going to focus in on uh, Pennsylvania for the purpose of this presentation. There are a couple different tuition categories that we have. So for Western Pennsylvania students, 
you either fall into the gold counties that you see here in Western Pennsylvania called the affordable tuition advantage, or if you're in central or Eastern Pennsylvania, you will be in the blue area, which is considered out of state tuition. So looking at the numbers in front of you, find whether you're in the affordable tuition advantage or the out of state based on the counties that I just showed. And there's two different costs that you see. You see the total commuter cost, that cost is strictly your tuition here at Youngstown State. So um, a tuition is two semesters full-time. A full-time student is between 12 and 18 credit hours. You'll notice that if you're in those gold affordable tuition advantage categories, you actually only, counties, you actually pay a $360 surcharge to an Ohio resident. If you were in those central or eastern areas of Pennsylvania, it's a $6,000 out-of-state surcharge. So either 99-48-48 or 15-588-48 for a full year of tuition. If you like to live in a YSU hall, you'll notice that there's a $9,700 annual room and board cost. That cost includes your room in a YSU hall, your meal plan, cable, laundry, internet, pretty much everything you need to be a student. The only costs that aren't included here is our health fee and then books. Um, and books, you know, really does vary depending on the amount of classes that you take. One thing to note about these costs is that we have what's called the Penguin Tuition Promise here at Youngstown State University, which means the tuition numbers that you come in at, you are actually locked into those tuition numbers for your four years as a student here. So if you come in as a freshman and these, these uh, tuition numbers and then the following year tuition goes up a little bit, you will not be affected. You actually remain in this category for all four years here as a student. So you can see what kind of the base costs are at YSU. I wanna talk about ways to curve those costs. So the freshman excellence scholarships are one of the main ways that students will curve costs. These are admission-based scholarships that are automatically awarded to students as long as they meet the criteria. So just to give you an idea, an entry-level scholarship, the first opportunity here at YSU is for students that have a 3.0 GPA in either a 19 ACT or 990 SAT. While we are test optional for admission right now, currently for scholarship, we are still requiring ACT or SAT scores. So we would need either the, um, the GPA and then one of the two test scores for you to get awarded that scholarship. As you can see, as the criteria increases, so does the award amount, clear until the trustees scholarship if you are ranked or tied for number one in your class, you automatically get a $5,000 award regardless of what your test scores are. These uh, scholarships are automatically renewed for three additional years as long as you maintain full-time status, so 12 or more credit hours per semester, and you get a B average, a 3.0 overall GPA. So these scholarships do not stack on each other, meaning if you get the Dean scholarship, that doesn't mean you also get the red and white in the first opportunity, but you can stack other scholarships on top of these. So there are a bunch of other scholarships in that column uh, to the right there that actually have separate applications, most of them, where you would apply and you can add to the Freshman Excellence Scholarships. The first one I wanna talk about is the University Scholars Award. Earlier in the presentation, I talked about our honors college. So if you have a 3.5 GPA and a 26 ACT or 1240 SAT, you can apply for the honors college. By applying for the honors college, you are automatically being put in contention for a full ride scholarship. YSU does not award a lot of full ride scholarships, but if you're admitted into the honors college and you don't get the full ride scholarship, you get a one to $3,000 academic award and a one to $3,000 housing award that actually will get stacked back on the Freshman Excellence Scholarships. And just take note that in order to meet the criteria for Honors College, you would already be eligible for the Dean Scholarship, which is $3,000 a year. So most Honors College students usually get between six and $9,000 a year off, which is pretty great. The Provost Scholarship. The Provost Scholarship is for out-of-state students. So jumping back to the tuition category here real quick, uh, well, first, I want to show that the out-of-state surcharge for people, uh, you know, again, central or eastern Pennsylvania is $6,000. So, again, if you are outside of those gold counties in Pennsylvania, you would be charged the $6,000 out-of-state surcharge. The Provost Scholarship, we actually will award you between four and $6,000 of that, of, of that um, basically, the uh, surcharge. 
So what that means is that if you have a 3.0 GPA and either a 19 ACT or 990 SAT, four of that $6,000, between four and six of that $6,000 surcharge will be um, waived. So essentially, you're going to be paying what an in-state student would pay. It's a pretty awesome scholarship. And again, that does stack on top of the freshman excellence scholarships as well that I showed here. Um, there are 700 plus scholarships on our financial aid webpage. So those are those departmental based scholarships that you hear about grants, all that stuff. The nice thing is you fill out one scholarship application. It's called the foundation application and will automatically put you in contention for any scholarship there that you're eligible for. My point to all of this is that you want to get as much money out of schools as you can. We know that you're looking at multiple schools. I can tell you right now, everybody watching this video, I want you all to be YSU Penguins. Every other school is going to be competing for you as well. You want to get the best deal that you can. Nobody wants to pay student loans back for 10, 15 years. And I will tell you right now, you don't need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a great education. So put us all up against each other. Make us work for you a little bit. I'm very confident in YSU. I know that we have excellent academic programs. Our campus is beautiful and we are one of the most affordable schools out there and we have some really great scholarships. So I'm very confident that we'll be, if not at the top of your list, very near the top as far as affordability as well. Okay, so I want to briefly walk you all through the steps to becoming a YSU Penguin. The first step to becoming a Penguin is to fill out the application. Our application is 100% online. We are not a part of the Common App, which means you do need to visit our apply.ysu.edu page and fill out our institutional app. I promise you in the time it takes you to fill out the institutional app, it's actually less time than submitting a Common App with a supplement. It is very quick. It will literally take you five minutes to do it. So you fill out the application. There's a $45 application fee. If you're on a free or reduced lunch plan, talk with your school counselor, have them send over a fee waiver. We're more than happy to waive the fee for you. And then to complete your application, at the very least, we need your high school transcripts. Because we are test optional, you don't need to submit ACT or SAT scores to complete your application. So we would definitely need your high school transcripts. If you're in AP or IB curriculums, or if you take the CLEP test, send us the scores. We'd be more than happy to give you credit for those. For example, scores of three and above on the AP exam will come in for college credit. If you've taken the ACT or SAT, please submit that as well, regardless of your score. I'm going to talk about our test optional review in a second, but basically submitting those scores cannot hurt you. I'll talk about the reviews, but um, again, we use those for scholarship. We use them for placement. We use them for admission review. So if you have them, send them. We're going to use them. And then college transcripts. If you're doing any dual enrollment work through like a local community college or a four-year school, we're happy to give you credit for that as well, but we will need the official college transcripts from every college that you've attended. We cannot award college credit based on high school transcripts. We need to see the official college transcripts. So that would complete your application. You can see in front of you that there's a variety of deadlines. The priority deadline for fall of 2021 is February 15th. It is a priority deadline because if you have everything in by February 15th, you'll be eligible for all of our scholarships you will also get priority consideration into your orientation date, which is really important. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Requirements. What does YSU look for in admission? Well, you already saw what our, what our scholarship requirements are, so you know what that is. Just to give you an idea, our average uh, averages for the fall 2020 students that just came in, our average GPA was a 3.5. Our average ACT was a 22. Our average SAT was a 1080. Mm -hmm. Under general review, we can technically admit with as low as a C average, as long as you have a C average in all of your core classes. So English, math, science, social studies, foreign language, and you have at least a 17 ACT or 920 SAT. If you are below the test scores, you'll go through, or the GPA for that matter, you'll go through a committee review. We are looking for reasons to admit if you're not admissible under that criteria because of your test scores, we will actually take those out of the equation and then we'll put you through the test optional review. For test optional, we are obviously weighing much more heavily on all of your core classes. So we wanna see at least a B to BC average in English, math, science, social studies, and foreign language. So 
Um, I highly recommend getting your application. And the point is we are going to review you under whatever process will most benefit you. After being admitted, you will go through a series of us determining how you're going to place. Initial placement, as you can see, is determined by the ACT or SAT. Uh, English is the example I have on the screen here. If your ACT uh, English subscore is a 17 or below, or if your SAT reading writing subscore is a 470 or below, you actually will place into a remedial or college prep English course which means at that point, we are going to require you to take placement testing. Obviously, if you haven't taken the ACT or SAT, you have to take placement testing. If you have AP or IB credits coming in or CLEP test or dual enrollment work in English, we will use all that as well. Maybe you've already taken a college English, uh, submit those transcripts, we'll, we'll review them and we'll just use that for placement. So the goal is we wanna place you as high as we can in both college composition, all students required to complete two college compositions and some form of math, regardless of your major. So placement is very important. After being placed, you'll come to an orientation. Orientation is a lot of fun. Uh, smaller cohorts of students will start coming to campus in late May to get a look around, to meet the other incoming students that are coming in in that specific day. But most importantly, you get your YSU ID and you meet with your advisor and that's the day you schedule your classes. Now, my advice to you would be if you know you want to come to YSU, I would recommend getting into the earliest orientation as possible. I don't know about you, but when high school was over, I was pretty dead set on not taking early classes at the college level. And that's what I did my first semester. I didn't start class till 10 a.m. It was beautiful. I loved it. Um, you know, at the college level, you actually get to pick and choose when your classes are. You may want a lunch at noon. You may only want to attend classes three days a week. Maybe you only want to take night classes. Whatever it is, uh, the earlier the orientation you get into, the more availability of classes. So, as I said, if you know you want to come here, get into the earliest one that you can. So, those are basically the three steps to becoming a YSU Penguin. And everything I can wrap into my portion as possible. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mario. Mario is going to talk a little bit about his student experience as well. If you have any questions for myself or Mario, please get them in the chat. We'll be more than happy to answer those. But at this time, Mario, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Bill. Um, yeah. So like you said, my name is Mario. I'm a third year criminal justice major here at YSU with a focus on forensic science. Um, so YSU has a whole bunch of things to offer uh, students whether that's academic wise or student orgs, activities just to get involved with. Um, so my whole Y experience started my freshman year, um, actually the second semester of freshman year, um, when I got involved with first year student services where they um, helped uh, incoming students get involved in campus um, and get them acclimated to campus, make sure they're comfortable going on and off campus and uh, just making sure that they're good with other classes as well. Um, and then I met Bill uh, at the admissions <laughs> office and I became a YSU tour guide um, and loving it. It's my third year here uh, being a tour guide and uh, I'm loving it, giving students tours every single day, um, making sure they love YSU and uh, see them as a YSU penguin in the fall. Um, and then shortly after that, I got, I got involved with Greek life. Um, Greek life is a huge part of uh, YSU campus here. Um, I'm involved with Sigma Tau Gamma fraternity. Um, so there's a whole bunch of, there's five different fraternities here on campus and there's four uh, different sororities here on campus as well. Um, and Greek Life is a big volunteering uh, organization, uh, whether that's on campus or off campus. We have philanthropies that we uh, associate ourselves with. Ours is uh, Special Olympics where we go out to cheer gyms or just involved raising money um, and helping them out with that. Um, our biggest event is Special uh, Special Olympics Polar Plunge. Um, so we go out into a freezing lake and uh, plunge in the lake and raise money that way. Um, a lot of people like to see us do that. Um, so we get a whole bunch of money with that. We also do SIG Tacos, where we uh, make tacos, nacho trays for the community, YSU students, anyone who wants to come and get, uh, give us support. Um, we raise money that way as well. Um, and just why YSU as a whole, um, we're a huge community, um, but we have a relatively small medium campus um, and you'll get to know everyone here on campus if you're involved. And that's my biggest thing uh, to stress to new incoming students is get involved. Um, and it helps you build connections and 
uh, further your career um, as a YSU student as well. Uh, but that is my Y experience, Bill. Tell me about these Sig Tacos. When is, when is that? I, I, Sig Tacos? You never heard of Sig Tacos? No, I'm interested, man. <laughs> uh, we do it every year. This year, we sadly couldn't do it because of COVID. Um, yeah. But uh, Sig Tacos, yeah, we are at the Newman Center from, oh, okay. uh, from I believe, 11 a.m. to around 7 p.m. Just making tacos, giving nacho trays out. Um, you can donate money and pay for them, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I don't see any questions that are coming in, so I'm going to actually throw a couple at Mario here and he can answer them for future students that may watch this. Mm -hmm. Mario, what would you say, um, if you could give advice to students starting their college experience, what would you, what, what kind of advice would you give them? Advice? Well, my number one is get involved, but, uh, number two, uh, is make sure that your study habits are down packed. Um, coming in as a freshman, my high school, senior year, junior year, I was didn't really have to study at all. I was just a natural test taker. I did well on my tests. I didn't have to study at all. And then freshman year came of college, uh, first semester, took my exams, and uh, totally tanked them. Um, and then I got help support through the CSP here. Um, it's free for YSU students to take advantage of. Um, and I ended up acing the semester. Um, so definitely get uh, that help that you need. Don't be afraid to ask for it. It's free. All the students here at YSU take advantage of it um, just because it is free for YSU students to go get that tutoring. And the tutors are awesome. They're amazing. They get you the help that uh, you need. Okay, cool. Um, for those of you out there, Mario is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So he yes. is a yeah. Pennsylvania student as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> What would you say is some of your favorite experiences about Youngstown State? Maybe like one or two. Um, experiences here. Uh, Greek life, number one. Great experience. Uh, just getting involved in Greek life changed my whole outlook on um, how I do things just because of those connections that we built um, through that and getting involved on campus, volunteering through campus, the people that I've met. And then number two is uh, Penguin Nights. Penguin Nights are the best uh, thing that YSU offers. It's an event that goes from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. It's free um, for students, free food, free activities to do. You can win big prizes, uh, AirPods, Beats, Smart TVs, um, and stuff like that. But ex experiences here are amazing. You definitely get um, what you put your put into. So Very cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mari, for your perspective. Yep. We got like three minutes left. Um, I do want to put this uh, slide up on the screen. So if anybody in the future has any questions, look, I remember being a senior, or even if you're a junior watching this, like the transition from high school to college can be stressful. And sometimes you don't know where to turn. Well, uh, we are more than happy to assist you. So if you ever need to reach out to us, our email and our phone number are right here. Pete, the penguin, our mascot right there is telling you to come visit. We really do want students to come visit campus. Uh, campus fit is extremely important. In, in my opinion, there are three main areas that really you should be considering when you're looking at schools. First and foremost is the academic program. So if you have a specific field you want to go into, make sure the school has that. It's pretty obvious. Or if you're undetermined, make sure the school has a lot of different programs to choose from. That way you have some variety. Second is definitely campus fit. And Mario kind of said it. I mean, YSU is a, a great community. We are like a big family here at the university. But you're not going to know unless you physically get on campus, check it out, try the food, walk around, see the people, see if, if it's a place you feel comfortable. I mean, you're going to be spending four years here. So you definitely want to do your research. And then the third, as I said before, is definitely cost. Um, and the thing about cost is what will happen is when you start applying and becoming admitted to schools, uh, early 2021 for the seniors watching this, you're going to start getting what are called financial aid packets sent to you. And those packets are going to outline the cost, scholarships, everything that it's going to cost to go into school. And then it's going to have the bottom line number. So that will help a lot to determine what, you know, the colleges are actually going to cost. I feel like YSU is very competitive in all these areas. We have a lot of great programs. Campus is beautiful and we are affordable. So if there's anything that we could ever do for you, please let us know. All right. I believe I'm at my time. So we want to thank you very much. You can also visit our webpage for more information. The application is at apply.ysu.edu and visit.ysu.edu to come and check out campus. 
Thank you so much. This is truly an excellent presentation, Bill, Mario. Thank you for giving us the time. If you could stop your screen share, Bill, I have a slide I want to bring up. Absolutely. I have a couple of closing remarks that I can give out and then we'll, we will be finished and through. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone who joined us to this evening. If you could stay on for a quick survey, a very quick four question survey afterwards, we would very much appreciate that. You may sign up for more sessions at pacac.org slash virtual. The fair goes through next week and recordings will be available of this session roughly about a week from now at that same website, pacac.org slash virtual. And once again, um, for Youngstown State and for PACAC, thank you very much for joining us. If you haven't already, please go out and vote. Very important to do. And have a great night. Take care, everyone. Thank you.